Good morning. My name is Stella Natufe, and I work for the City of Chicago, Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. Welcome to the BACP Business Education Workshop webinar series. We have adapted our regular business education workshops at City Hall into these webinars until further notice. On behalf of our Commissioner, Rosa Escarino, I want to inform you that business licenses can be processed online by visiting chicagobusinessdirect.org. If you are a part of the BACP Entrepreneur Certificate Program, you can get credit for joining this webinar by sending an email to bacpoutreach at cityofchicago.org. If you want to learn more about this program, please visit chicago.gov forward slash business education. To help guide your business and employees during Chicago's reopening process, please visit chicago.gov forward slash reopening. Also, BACP and the City of Chicago's Office of Emergency Management and Communications created Shy Biz Emergency Alerts. You can opt in to receive targeted emergency alerts for the business community. If you are interested, please visit chicago.gov forward slash Shy Biz Alerts. We would like to encourage all of our attendees to ask questions. Please use the chat box and send your questions to all panelists. There will be a Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Today's webinar is entitled, How to Open a Concession at O'Hare and Midway International Airports, presented by the Chicago Department of Aviation Concessions Department. At this time, I will now turn this webinar over to Horatio Watson from Aviation. Thank you, Stella, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. On behalf of the mayor of the city of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, the commissioner of the Department of Aviation, Jamie Ree, and the deputy commissioner of the concessions department, Castalia Serna, I'd like to welcome each of you to how to open a concession at O'Hare and Midway International Airport. Are you interested in operating a restaurant or retail shop at O'Hare or Midway International Airport, but don't know where to begin? You've come to the right place. Today, we will be discussing O'Hare operations, O'Hare concessions program, ORD 21 expansion, Midway operations, Midway concessions program, process to operate a concession, elements of a concession and resources. Before I begin, I'd like to introduce again, Castalia Serna, Deputy Commissioner of Concessions. Castalia. Thank you, Horatio. Happy Friday, everyone. On behalf of Mayor Lori Lightfoot, Commissioner Reed, and the entire team at the Chicago Department of Aviation, I'm excited to be welcoming you this morning to our Concessions 101 workshop webinar. I am Castalia Serna, Deputy Commissioner of Concessions at the Department of Aviation, or CDA, as we like to call it. The CDA and our concession operators have had a fabulous partnership over the years, and that relationship will be even more instrumental in the months and years ahead as we see travel continue to move in the right direction. Chicago's airports have proven to be resilient, and we will remain confident at the road ahead of us. Economic recovery and opportunities for our local small business community is what brings us here today. In response to COVID-19, we continue to be in coordination with our federal and local public health partners to keep our airports operational and safe. And it's an ongoing process. Passenger needs and expectations are changing as a result of the pandemic. And we have been listening and adapting. Through all of this, we remain a 24 seven operation and have provided uninterrupted concession offerings. We have implemented standard operating procedures for all our concession operators to address cleanliness, social distancing and face coverings. This webinar is another step forward in preparing for the future. That future holds opportunity for you and all the businesses and vendors in attendance today. 
in many ways are concessionaires, many of whom are small, local, and minority owned, are the backbone of our airport community, representing Chicago and employing tens of thousands of people. From Mayor Lightfoot on down, we understand that our airports are economic engines and that we must invest in them. And those investments are catalysts for opportunities that touch every one of Chicago's 77 neighborhoods. From our restaurants and shops right up to the gates, our airports create the first and lasting impressions of our great city. While we navigate the pandemic, we remain poised on bringing job opportunities to our local residents. We are committed to prov promoting equality and inclusion with our concession contracts by focusing on diversity. And we are working diligently to bring new ideas to the table and new owners and operators into the fold. I wanna let my team shine a little bit now, so I'm going to leave it there. You'll be hearing from our Rockstar Concessions team, starting with our Concession pro Projects Administrators, Horatia Watson, Drew Holmick, Russell Johnson, and Michael Stein. We, they've put together an amazing presentation for you today. Thank you again for your interest in operating at O'Hare and Midway International Airports. And with that, Rachel, take it away. Thank you, Castalia. And again, good morning, everyone. Today, I will be providing a brief overview of airline operations at O'Hare Airport. O'Hare is served by nearly 50 of the world's leading airlines and is a major inter-alliance connecting gateway, including United Airlines and their Star Alliance partners, American Airlines with One World Partners, and Delta Airlines Sky Team. O'Hare has multiple non-aligned airlines, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. Here's a fun fact for you. O'Hare is a dual hub for United and American Airlines. In 2019, there are over 159, 105 million passengers that travel through O'Hare and Midway airports. Of that, approximately 84 million passengers traveled from or through O'Hare. 2019 was a record setting year for O'Hare airport achieving the most operations in the US with over 919 takeoffs and landings. That same year, Midway Airport had over 20 million passengers and over 232 takeoffs and landings. O'Hare and Midway International Airports provide direct and nonstop service to 275 cities around the world. Over 50% of O'Hare's passengers have connecting flights and never leave the terminal. What a captive audience. Here are a couple of fun facts. O'Hare is the only US airport that has flights to six continents. O'Hare is the most connected airport in the US and second in the world. Here's the big picture. Look at the airport. O'Hare has over 191 gates. Beginning in the upper left, we have terminal one, Terminal two in the middle, terminal three in the center, terminal five to the lower right. Let's look at each terminal in detail. Beginning with terminal one. Terminal one has two concourses, concourses B and C. There are 14.6 million employments in terminal one. Major carriers are Lufthansa and United Airlines. Terminal two has two concourses, E and F. There are 6.7 million employments. Major carriers are Air Canada, Delta, and United Airlines. Terminal three has four concourses from the right to the left. We have concourses G, H, K, and L. 
Terminal 3 has 17.4 million in claimants. Major carriers are Air Alaska, American Airlines, Iberia, Japan Airlines, and Spirit Airlines. Terminal 5 has Concourse M. Terminal 5 has a variety of international carriers flying to six of the seven continents around the world. There are 3.4 million in claimants with several major air carriers, including Aer Lingus, Alitalia, Emirates, Etihad, Finnair, and Korean Air. Now I'd like to introduce to you Russell Johnson, who will be discussing O'Hare concession program. Russell. Good morning. Thank you, Horatio. Airport concessions at O'Hare and Midway airports have six categories food and beverage, retail, specialty retail, sorry, news and gifts, services, duty free, and advertising. There are over 219 concessions at O'Hare Airport, taking up over 190,000 square feet. And in 2019, bringing sales receipts of over $530 million. Current slide shows you what concessions look like and how they're spread up amongst the three terminals, Terminal 1, Terminal 2, Terminal 3, and our bus shuttle center. If you look at Terminal 1, some of the major brands you'll recognize, Eli's Cheesesteak, McDonald's, and Starbucks. In Terminal 2, you'll notice some local brands like Chicago Blackhawks, Nuts on Clark, and an international brand, Mac, are represented. In Terminal 3, we have Cubs Bar, a local favorite, and a very large HK food court, which includes both McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, and Starbucks coffee. We'll turn our attention to Terminal 5. Terminal 5 also represents a mix of international, local, and regional brands, including Burger King, McDonald's, and Garrett's Popcorn. Duty free is one of the first things you'll see as you enter through Terminal 5, as you go through the concourses, is give you a list of international goods and local goods to buy from. There's also food and beverage in the food court, like RJ Grunts. We also have throughout the concourse, Pub 51, Goddess and Grocer, and of course, Big Bow. In 2019, we opened our multimodal facility. Our multimodal facility houses our rental car companies and 2,600 parking spaces available. The next slide shows the lobby, a beautiful, state of the art, artistic lobby for our rental car companies to be housed. So now let's talk about the future, where we're going at O'Hare Airport. O'Hare 21 is the program which we use to expand the airport operations. O'Hara 21 was the end of OPM or the O'Hara Modernization Program, which gave us six parallel runways, three on each side of the airport terminals. This allowed us to, to reduce delays and increase capacity in the future. It will also allow us to increase our gate capacity from 191 to 220 gates, integrate large, in, uh, the latest screening technology or TSA, and increase our baggage handling capacities. If we look at O'Hara 21, we started back in 2019 with the L Stinger, which is the top left-hand part of your screen. We are currently in operations to enhance and expand Terminal 5, which is a 1.2 billion investment dollar investment, adding over 350,000 square feet to the concourse space. This will increase gate capacity by 10 gates, and increase concession spaces by 75%. Will also become the new home on the west wing of T5 of Delta Airlines once the expansion is complete. The next slide gives you a artistic rendering of what the east wing of Delta uh, of the Terminal 5 will look like once the 10 gates are expanded. Again, this is a 750,000 square foot addition to Terminal 5 location. What's not shown in here is the west side of the terminal where Delta will be housed once the expansion is completed. Again, another artist's rendering of what the beautiful terminal, artistic, creative, incorporating natural light 
and plenty of space for pastor experience. The next couple of slides give you an internal look at that concourse and concept design. As you can see, plenty of areas for passengers to sit, wide concourse spaces, beautiful gate areas, and artistic creations, and air and airflow and natural daylight are incorporated throughout the whole expansion. Once T5 expansion is completed, we'll move right into the expansion of what we'll call our global terminal, satellite one and satellite two. Satellite one and satellite two will double the space of a normal concourse at O'Hare Airport. It will also increase the number of concessions and international capacity for both satellite one and satellite two. Once these two terminals are completed, we'll move into the construction of an 8.5 billion global terminal, which will be a futuristic look at how airports will work in the future. At this point, I'd like to bring on Drew Homick to tell you more about midway operations and concessions there. Thank you very much, Russell. Good morning, everyone. So we'll jump right into uh, Midway uh, Airport and some of the passengers and operations that we have. So Midway is a leading point-to-point -point service in the U.S. And in 2019, prior to COVID, had just south of 22 million passengers come through. We had five scheduled carriers serving about 79 destinations. Now, the total number of carriers at Midway has stabilized even, through, even after post-COVID-19, while the destination serve has actually increased. And in quarter uh, one of 2021, Midway's direct flights were 72 within the United States and 10 international destinations. Southwest Airlines represents over 90% of the cap capacity at Midway. And as of April, 2021, the passenger traffic is approximately 35% below 2019 numbers. So that number is continuing to increase and we're continuing to see passengers coming back to our airports, which is great news. As we said, Southwest is one of the uh, airlines that we have flying out of here. We have six other airlines that are operating out of Midway Airlines. Uh, out of Midway Airport, excuse me, Porter Airlines is the only one that's currently suspended due to COVID, but will hopefully be coming back in in the next couple of months. The Midway Modernization Program, this is a $333 million program that really was invested into the entire airport experience. And there are three marquee projects that compose this program. Two of them are substantially complete. That is the Passenger Security Checkpoint Expansion. This is an 80,000 square foot pavilion that's over Cicero Avenue that really has enhanced the customer experience when they're coming through security. Also substantially complete is the terminal parking garage enhancements. So this includes automated uh, parking structures on enhancements to the elevators, escalators, lighting, painting, really just the overall experience in the parking garage. And then one of the developments that is still ongoing is our concessions redevelopment program, which, which we will get into more details right now. So to talk a little bit about the Midway Concessions Program and scope, Midway Partnership uh, is the name of the joint venture that was selected to be the developer and operator of the Midway Concessions Program. So this was an RFP that went out in the fall of 2015 and City Council uh, was awarded in 2017. Uh, Midway Partnership is investing their own $75 million worth of capital in renovating and expanding the entire Concessions Program. So that's everything from food and beverage, news and gifts, specialty retail, services, and amenities throughout the entire airport. We're very excited and very proud to say that we are bolstering the highest ACDBE percentage in the entire nation at 56%. And as we go out through the rest of this redevelopment, as we continue to bring on new operators, that number is likely to only increase. Throughout the entire redevelopment, the plan is to the double the amount of permanent jobs from 700 to over 1,400, and the program's footprint will also double to uh, about 70,000 uh, square feet and the number of units will go from 47 before Midway Partnership took over, took over to over 70. Uh, we're also excited to, to introduce a concessions mobile food ordering service in this last December. And this gives people the opportunity to order food from their phone to either pick up at the restaurant or they're delivered directly to your gate. And today we have constructed over 30 new concession units, which we will talk about here in a little bit. So first we wanna talk a little bit about the 2019 versus 2020 concessions performance and sales. Um, as you can see in the third column, we have the 2019 sales compared to 2020. Um, the breakdown is about 70 to 75% of our sales coming in uh, at Midway is food and beverage, so our restaurant locations, and then combined news and gifts and specialty retail, which uh, essentially is our, our retail offerings, is about 25 to 30% of uh, the revenue that is coming in with services uh, about 1%. 
And this gives you a projected development plan. So this will be the entire uh, midway offerings um, at the end of the redevelopment. Uh, like we said, out of all of those offerings right now is about over 70. Um, and to date, we have 30 new uh, locations that have been uh, constructed. So this one right here shows you those 30 new locations. And of these 30 new locations, we're featuring 22 brands. They're completely new to the airport. And as part of the redevelopment, some of that was very important to us, important to the city, was bringing in a lot of the um, local offerings, small businesses, ACDBE offerings that really showcase the culinary arts of uh, Chicago, um, as well as a, a lot of the great retail brands that are, are common to our city. And most recently at the end of Concourse B, we just opened up the Hudson nonstop location. Um, we opened this up two weeks ago. Um, this utilizes some of the Amazon just walk out technology. So only the second uh, airport in the United States to utilize that technology. Um, it's been very well received and, and you essentially walk in um, a credit card is, is on hold for you. And then you grab your products and you walk out and it's automatically charged. So um, uh, highly recommend if you're traveling through Midway to check it out at the end of Concourse B. These are a couple of pictures of the new constructed location. Sarah Candy is in the top left corner. That is also a, a small local uh, um, confectionery that just opened about a month ago in Midway on Concourse B as well. And then we have a couple of pictures of the restaurants that were actually built in the middle of the concourse. So we took out the moving walkways and then that exact same footprint built some of these long and narrow um, uh, restaurants, including Harry Carey's, Home Run Inn, and Hubbard Inn. And then also included in some of the pictures in the top right, uh, bottom right, and then the middle bottom are showing the Concourse A Food Hall, which was opened in August of 2018, um, that supports five local small business restaurants. Um, it really gives a, a good opportunity, a great look at the tarmac, uh, a nice food uh, sitting hall that, that uh, we're excited to have opened up. And Midway Partnership, as we described, is a joint venture that is operating all the concessions here at Midway Airport. And they constantly have some opportunities to, to get involved with their concessionaires over at Midway. Um, not only on the design and construction side, but also some supplies um, so that, you know, for the day to day operations and for services for the day to day operations. So all of those are listed there. So if anyone is interested in that, would highly suggest going to midwaypartnership.com to contact them to get more information. And now I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Michael Stein, to talk a little bit about the process to operate a concession. Thank you, Drew. Companies have several ways to operate a concession. They can operate as a single operator. Okay. Uh, when the company leases directly from the airport to operate the concession, they can enter into a joint venture with uh, another company and lease and operate the concession. And they can operate as a subtenant where the company leases from a larger concessionaire and operates as their subtenant. Next, you need to determine how you would operate. You can operate as a franchise. Examples would be like a McDonald's or a Dunkin' Donuts. You can enter, operate under a license agreement, say like a Harry Terry's or a Publican. You can operate as a local or regional restaurant, like from a Chicago neighborhood. Examples would be Berghoff and Nuts on Clark. And lastly, uh, you can create your own unique airport brand that is only at the airports, like an ice bar or Cubs grill. This next slide identifies the steps it takes to operate a concession. Step one, CDA identifies locations available for lease. Step two, CDA generates and issues a request for proposal. Step three, Respondents prepare and submit proposals. Next, CDA evaluates the responses and selects a concessionaire. Once selected, the concessionaire and CDA will finalize the lease. CDA would seek approval from City Council. Once approved, concessionaires would submit construction plans for review and approval. And lastly, concessionaires would complete their construction and open for business. The goals of our concession program are to optimize revenues at the airport and the local economy, maximize ACDBE participation, 
provide opportunities for local brands and operators, provide high quality products and services, promote high quality facility designs, promote environmental sustainability, increase the variety of offerings at the airports, showcase the character of Chicago to the world, provide first class customer service, and promote a fair price and value relationship with the traveling public. Things you need to take in consideration when operating a concession are your hours of operation, determining how you're gonna comply with all the badging and security requirements. If your employees are gonna uh, use the parking available at the airport or take public transportation, and you need to think through logistics for getting your goods and waste in and out of the airports in an efficient manner. Hey, Yolanda, you're up. Thank you so much, Michael, for that. So Michael talked a little bit about what it is to operate in the airport, what it takes to get uh, to that, that point of operation. However, it's an open bid process, and what we'll discuss today are the elements of submitting a proposal for a concession at O'Hare International Airport. So the elements of the proposal are very detailed. This response uh, requires all of these elements that you see here. So the cover letter should identify the RFP to which you are submitting a proposal. Experience and qualifications should tell the story as to why you are qualified to operate a concession at O'Hare or Midway. Telling your story about your expertise in the area that you are proposing. The selection committee will pay close attention to the management plan, the development plan, your ACDBE participant, participation plan, your references, your business information and financial statements when evaluating your proposal. The selection committee, while reviewing this information, wants to be certain that the proposed concession entrant has the wherewithal to operate in the high volume, fast paced airport environment. Exceptions actually relate to specific items or terms in the lease agreement that you request to be changed, rephrased, or omitted, if at all possible. Next, we'll talk about the minimum qualifications to actually bid on a proposal. So, when submitting a proposal, we talked a little bit about the selection committee and the evaluation. And the evaluation will also consider the minimum qualifications. Generally, at a minimum, the potential concession entrant must have a specific number of years of experience operating the concept in which they are proposing to operate at the airport. Also, a minimum amount of average sales and receipts during a specific period are also key information that the selection committee will look at. This information is also used to gauge the potential concession entrance ability to meet the capital improvement costs associated with operating a concession in an airport environment. And of course, the selection committee will also look closely at the ACDBE participation plan to ensure that CFR 49 Part 23, goals and requirements are being met. We'll talk a little bit more about ACDBE as we move through this presentation. However, the ACDBE goal will be stated in the RFP and is required to be met in full or by demonstrating good faith efforts that the goal could not be met. We'll talk a little bit about rent and fees. Compensation to the city. This is an example of compensation to the city. 
that would be included in your proposal. Keep in mind that bids are not awarded to the highest bidder and these fees are more than likely to be stated as a range in the RFP or as a set amount. The base rent rate per square foot will escalate at 3% each year. For example, if the base rent in 2021 is $50 per square foot, then the base rent in 2022 will be $50 plus a 3% increase of $1.50 for a total of $51.50 for the 2022 base rent fee. The license fee is the greater of the percentage fee or the minimum annual guarantee fee. We will see an example of that in a later slide. The marketing fee is half a percentage of gross sales and the central distribution fee for O'Hare will be determined based on facility costs, but will generally be around 1 to 2% of gross sales. So make sure that these are considerations when providing information for your bid to operate a concession. And keep in mind at this time, no distribution center is at O'Hare. However, it is under consideration. Lease terms and percent rents. Here are the basic terms and fees associated with the multiple types of concepts that one can operate at the airport. The terms are specific to allow for the amortization of the build out costs and over the estimated useful life of other improvements installed at build out. As you see here, there is a range for the proposed percentage rent, but remember the contract is not awarded to the highest bidder. More on those lease terms according to the specific concepts. So here, are the fees associated with concept categories. Once again, the terms are specific to allow for the amortization and build out costs over the useful life of the improvements installed at build out. And keep in mind that the range for the proposed percent rent uh, is stated in the RFP and the contract will not be awarded to the highest bidder Now, let's talk a little bit more about the percent rent versus minimum annual guarantee fee. The MAG is usually set in the RFP and the percent fee is usually stated as a range. When making the decision on how much of your revenue you are willing to share, you must consider that if you make zero dollars, you still must pay the minimum annual guarantee fee and not the lesser of the percentage fee and the mag. Take for instance, this example. If the percentage fee is less than the mag and the mag is due as payment. If you exceed the mag, the greater amount is due as payment. So if annual sales are $800,000 and the percent rent at 15%, you generate a amount due of $120,000. However, if your annual sales are only $500,000 at a percentage rent rate of 15%, that only garners $75,000 due. However, that concessionaire must still pay the $100,000 minimum annual guarantee fee. Business terms. We talked a little bit about amortization over the term of the agreement for build outs. And it's very specific uh, and it's spelled out in the RFP. So this is another consideration when talking about compensation for the operation of a concession at the airport. It also includes your leasehold taxes, utilities that must be individually metered. What does that mean? If you're bringing electric 
or gas or water to your space, you must be sure that the utilities are individually metered for those elements. Also, a security deposit equal to six months of the minimum annual guarantee fee is also required. So in the previous example of $100,000 for the minimum annual guarantee fee, a security deposit of $50,000 will be due at the time of your lease signing. So that is another consideration. Also, concession build out costs. And historically, those costs have been upwards of $1,000 per square foot of leased space. Value pricing. Michael talked a little bit about value to our traveling public. The one way that we ensure that there is that value relationship when travelers are making purchases at the airports is that we've developed a strict value pricing strategy that ensures pricing at the airports will not exceed the average prices charged in downtown Chicago. The airports have also developed a strict sustainability <laughs> strategy that each concession operator must adopt and include in their day to day operations. These green initiatives include the reduction in the use of plastics and styrofoam with those plastics and styrofoam products being replaced by green compostable items to ensure a healthy experience for the passenger, the employee as well as the environment. We talked a lot about ACDBE participation. And what is an ACDBE? An ACDBE is a for-profit business, a firm uh, that is considered being ACDBE if it meets the criteria as listed here. The company must be owned and managed by a socially and economic disadvantaged individual of at least 50, 51%. An ACDBE plan must be included with the proposal and the ACDBE certified firm must be certified at the time of the proposal submittal or the proposal will be marked non-responsive. Good faith efforts must also be demonstrated to achieve the ACDBE goal that is set in the RFP. So what does that mean? If you could not secure ACDBE participation in the area of expertise required for the concept that you are proposing, you must show good faith efforts of reaching out to those ACDBE companies that might be interested in participating in the program. So our ACDBE program. Now, the airport concessions programs are subject to federal regulations governing ACDBE participation. An ACDBE goal is established for each request for proposal. And that ACDBE goal can be fulfilled by a concessionaire in several ways, including direct ownership, joint venture partnerships, or subcontracts with ACDBEs, the purchases of goods and services from ACDBEs. But remember, the proposal will be deemed non responsive because the ACDBE section of the proposal is passed or failed. And the respondent must either satisfy the goal stated in the RFP or must show good faith efforts as to why the goal cannot be satisfied. ACDBE certification can be obtained through the city of Chicago and you can find your resources for certification at these websites. You can contact the Department of um, procurement services 
for certification applications. The applications are online. There are no paper applications accepted. And the Department of Procurement Services also holds a quarterly workshop on how to become certified. Key information. For notifications regarding upcoming RFPs, please be sure to sign up for the Chicago Department of Aviation Web Alerts, and you will be among the first businesses to learn of the RFP release. Proposals are typically due 90 days after posting, but be sure to sign up for the CDA Web Alerts because this time period can be variable. So stay aware of the due dates and times as changes may occur. A pre-proposal meeting will take place shortly after the RFP is posted. Be sure to attend this meeting because it will provide additional information that may not be stated in the proposal documents. So the pre-proposal meeting may also allow for tours of the proposed spaces, so you don't want to miss out. The RFP will specify a deadline for the submission of questions, and all questions must be submitted in writing, and the answers will be provided in an addendum to the RFP. Next slide tells you about some resources that are available to those that are interested in doing business as an airport concession. The Airport Minority Advisory Council is the only nonprofit organization that is dedicated to women and minorities in the participation of airport contracting and executive positions in the airline uh, and aeronautical industry. Airport Experience News is also a good resource, which gives some educational sessions on operating at airports. Airport Councils International is a, also a great resource uh, for those interested. And of course, the City of Chicago, the Department of Aviation. Oh, and one other thing, the City of Chicago Minimum Wage Ordinance. I know we are all so familiar with that. And this is an ordinance that also encompasses employees at the airport. And I believe July 1, the minimum wage will increase for all City of Chicago workers, including those here at the airport. So when submitting your proposal, that is another consideration when you want to look at fees being uh, expensed for your operation here at the airport. And once again, for those people interested in construction or products and services at Midway, please contact Midway Partnership directly at the website you see here. Also, please be sure to sign up for the CDA web alerts. They will notify you when the bids are released. They will notify you of any addendum and any upcoming concessions workshops, symposiums, and other events. All right, so right now we will open it up for questions if we have any. We do have questions. I'm looking in the Q and A box first. What is the minimum sales requirement and is it feasible for a small business? That is a really good question. So the, the capital outlay to operate a concession at the airport when looking at those considerations of build out costs, when looking at the considerations for providing a letter of credit, uh, when looking at the minimum annual guarantee fee, the selection committee wants to know that that concessionaire has the wherewithal to operate in this environment. And so generally there is a cap or a floor for minimum receipts and previously, those minimum receipts, average receipts over a three-year period 
has been at a level of about $3 million. So this might be an opportunity for that small business operator to join forces with another operator or become a subcontractor with a larger operator or become a joint venture partner with another operator. So there is still room for a small business to operate as a concessionaire at the airports. <clears throat> How is a new company able to bid if they do not have sufficient past year's revenue because they are a new company? That is a really good question. The one thing that we want to make sure of here at the airports is that we're able to offer our passengers the best experience possible. If a person has no demonstrated history of operating that particular concept, the selection committee may very well look over that particular um, entity that's interested in operating because they have not proven or demonstrated that they can actually operate that concept. That's why it's key that the person or entity bidding on the opportunity has that minimum experience because we want to be sure to offer our passengers the best possible experience. So once again, look for opportunities, that, that entity should look for opportunities to partner with someone who has that experience in the concept that they want to bid on. That way they can gain that experience through actually doing the work behind that concept. For a mom and pop company that doesn't have access to a large distribu distributor or a parent conglomerate company where they can buy it in massive quantity at reduced wholesale pricing and then divide them up into product, it is incredibly difficult to source retail products, including niche and special products, and then sell them for a profit at a price point on par with, streets, with street price points. How is this company able to adhere to CDA's value price pointing policy without allowing for a percentage increase above street pricing? That is that is a very comprehensive, uh, well thought out question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so what we find when we do our value pricing surveys is that the prices on the street are actually already have that markup. So they're not at wholesale prices when it's uh, street side. So our value pricing allows for that concessionaire to use the downtown Chicago stores as a benchmark. And I think it's safe to say that downtown Chicago is not at wholesale prices. So uh, it is possible to, to make a profit. Or maybe that entity should uh, look at uh, a, a different supplier or join forces with other retailers to have that ability to buy in bulk through economies of scale. So maybe it's something uh, of a collaboration that could be done with other retailers that would allow for that re retailer to, to make a profit. Is it different to get into Terminal 5 than it is to get into Terminals 1, 2, and 3? It is, it's, that's a really good question. Uh, there is actually an RFP that is public right now for opportunities in Terminal 5 as well as a couple of opportunities in terminal, uh, I think one in terminal three and one in terminal one, I believe. So, oh, so, okay. So yes, so uh, it is, so it's possible, it's the same process. So please go to uh, the uh, City of Chicago Department of Aviation's website. Uh, you can find the link to the data room uh, if you do a forward slash RFP 2021, 
So that's flychicago.com forward slash RFP 2021, and you'll find that RFP opportunity for Terminal 5 uh, in the data room. Great question. Is there somewhere where I can see a checklist of all the required steps? Yeah, absolutely. So what one can do is to look at that T5 proposal. Uh, that RFP, look at any other previous RFP that's been released. And there is actually a check sheet that is in the, the proposal itself um, that one can download to be sure that they've included all of the pertinent information required to submit that RFP. Next question, is that 3 million per year for three years or 3 million over three years? It's an average receipts over a three year period. However, remember, depending on the particular concept that the RFP is requesting proposals for, it may be a different level of income necessary or revenue necessary to meet those minimum requirements. So it's very specific depending on the RFP. I just use that as an example. Uh, I think that was for a previous food and beverage RFP that was released where a minimum of $3 million over a three year period uh, was required. What is the best way for a supplier to market themselves? Oh, wow. I love this question because this industry is all about relationships. Now, how do you forge those relationships? You participate in outreach events. You participate in workshops. Uh, you make sure that you are uh, front of mind for those people who make the decisions, meaning those operators who make the decisions about who they use as suppliers. You can reach out to them. You can actually send them your, your newsletter. Uh, you can you know, have multiple touch points with those operators who you want to connect with. You can also join a, an industry specific group, such as the Airport Minority Advisory Council, Airport Experience, there are many ways to remain relevant in the eyes of a concession operator so that you can forge those relationships. I am a certified ACDBE wine and spritz importer supplier. If an RFP awarded, can concessiony still include my company as part of the ACDBE plan as well as the National Concessions Company? Absolutely, and I think I know who asked this question. I believe I've spoken, uh, spoken with this person, and that's a really, really good question. And absolutely, because uh, specifically uh, the Terminal 5 RFP, I believe there is a uh, one bar area uh, that is connected with a, um, fast casual dining. So absolutely, you could uh, potentially become a supplier for a bar. Uh, and you could potentially become a supplier for other concession operators who run uh, similar concepts. I know for one, it's Vino Volo. Uh, they operate in a lot of airports nationwide. Uh, I would definitely drum up a conversation with, with them uh, they are a part of the Parodies Lagardere group um, of companies, and I would definitely contact them for sure uh, and, and stay relevant. Come to uh, workshops, uh, participate in outreach events, get to know those concessionaires, let them know what you offer, and forge those relationships. Okay, now we're going to the chat box. Can you go over the price per square footage again? So over uh, the past couple of years, historically, especially with the, the build out, a most recent build out that we had in Terminal 5, uh, the costs per square foot 
for that fast food restaurant were at $1,000 per square foot. So if you have a 100 square foot space, it'll cost you $100,000 to build that out. Is this the same process as years past? I've explored this in the past and it appeared to be required to hire a political connected consultant. Has this changed? That is an interesting question because I have, I've been here since 1997 and this process has always been an open bid process. Is an Illinois gaming board approved slots, casinos, and bar operator able to operate at O'Hare and Midway airports? Ooh, wow. Not yet. <laughs> what is the average square feet for concessions at Midway? It depends on the concept. Um, for our food and beverage operators, it, it could be 2,400 square feet. For a retailer, it could be anywhere between 250 square feet to 5,000 square feet. It all depends on the particular concept. It depends on what the uh, offering is uh, in a package uh, that's been, um, uh, you know, included in the proposal. Uh, it, it, it varies. A good rule of thumb for anyone who's interested to learn more about the size of the spaces is to uh, go to the flychicago.com website and take a look at our uh, concessions program. Take a look at it. Am I responsible for hiring employees? The concession operator is required to hire their own employees. The uh, City of Chicago Department of Aviation does not, um, you know, uh, <laughs> does not uh, provide the concession operator with employees. However, what the uh, Chicago Department of Aviation does do is host quarterly and annual job fairs that assist the concessionaires in finding employees for their concession operation. It looks like that was the last of our questions. Any final words of encouragement for today's attendees? Absolutely. We have Castalia Serna, Deputy Commissioner of Concessions. Thank you everyone for joining us today. This now concludes the presentation of how to open a concessions at O'Hare and Midway International Airports. We would like to thank our partners, Commissioner Rosa Escareno and her fabulous staff for participating and, and helping us out today at BACP for hosting the session today. On behalf of Mayor Lightfoot, the Chicago Department of Aviation Commissioner Jamie L. Reed and the entire concessions department. We would like to thank you. Thank you all for joining us this morning. And we most certainly hope that this presentation was important informative. Have a wonderful day. Thanks again. To receive, we will on we will not be sending copies of the PowerPoint out. But this presentation will be on the BACP YouTube page sometime next week. If you would like to receive credit for today's webinar, please send us an email to BACP Outreach at cityofchicago.org. Again, if you are part of the BACP Entrepreneur Certificate Program and would like to receive credit for today's webinar, please send us an email to BACP Outreach at cityofchicago.org. To learn more about our upcoming webinars, please visit chicago.gov forward slash business education. Again, that is chicago.gov forward slash business education. 
Thank you for attending this morning's webinar. Go out and enjoy this great weather and happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. Thank you.